What's up guys? It's Tyler and Turbo Tim and today we're going to talk about the differences between coilovers and lowering springs. Today we're going to break down the differences between a lowering spring for your car or a coilover. Um, there are quite a few distinct differences. We're going to go over the pros and cons between them. Uh, but to kind of break it down to simple terms, a lowering spring is a spring that's going to fit your factory suspension. With these, you're not changing your shocks, your struts. Uh, most of the cars that we work on are McPherson style, so you're going to have a spring that will go on your strut in the front and in the rear. It's either going to go on a strut just like in the 3800s or with Ecotex, their divorce setup. Then with a coilover, what you have is a complete unit. If you watch any of our coilover unboxings or install videos, you will see that this piece replaces your entire strut and spring. So let's get into uh, the pros and cons of each. A perk of a lowering spring is cheap. Yeah. You could just buy them couple hundred bucks, two, three hundred bucks or less. Yeah. And you just take your stuff apart dangerously. Yeah. Like most people <laughs> are like, take the impact gun and just cross your fingers that <laughs> it doesn't shoot across the room and hurt somebody or break something. Use a spring compressor. You can <laughs> run them from AutoZone. Don't be a cheap ass. Or you could go to maybe like a muffler man. Muffler mans will have these cool little wall strut compressors. It yep. just compresses the whole unit. And then, it, and then you take the nut off the top and then you release it and then you can just pull it all apart. What's nice about a stock spring and strut assembly, like the, the overall design of it, is that you do generally have more suspension travel. Yes. A lot of the times when you put coilovers on a car, you'll go from, uh, let's say, four inches of suspension travel to like two. Yeah. And then, you know, that can have its downsides. You start pulling in and out of parking lots or gas stations and like one of your tires picks up <laughs> and it's wheel. fine if it's your rear, but it sucks if you go to hit the throttle and your front <laughs> tires off the ground and it spins and then, you know, that doesn't burn out into anywhere. the parking lot. Now, the biggest con of a lowering spring is it's always going to be a compromise. Your car from the factory is set up with a specific sp spring rate and then your shocks and struts are valved for that spring rate and the weight of the car. The downfall of that suspension usually is that it's not low enough. Uh, as car enthusiasts, we love low cars. Or so, generally stiff enough either. Yeah. Like if you're gonna hit, if you wanna carve some corners, you know, it's just too soft. Yeah, factory suspension is notoriously soft because we as enthusiasts are the minority. So you, you throw on your lowering springs, stiffer than stock, perform better, but then you still have the strut and shocks that are valve for a stock spring. So yep. now you kind of have a mismatch combination in a lot of times. Like they do make a premium strut that's revalved that maybe works with that combination, but now you're kind of talking coilover money. Yeah, yeah, once you're into replacing shocks and struts with especially upgraded units, uh, you know, coilovers start at around $1,000, sometimes less, sometimes a little more, depending on your platform. but. Uh, and how cheap of a set you want to buy. I mean, if, yeah. you, if you just want to go stance bro, then <laughs> you can just get a couple hundred dollar coil over and cross your fingers that they last. Yep. And then lower your car to whatever, you know, however low you want to go. Yep. And with lowering springs, oftentimes you have to cut down bump stops. Yep. Uh, if you get lowering springs that aren't designed well, uh, you're going to run into coil binding and bottoming out. And so... You know, it, it's just not a perfect solution. Yeah, and the lack of of control. Like, you just buy your lowering springs, and if the back end sits lower than you like, you're stuck with it. Yep. That's just, that is what it is. Or you get wheels that are one size larger than your factory wheels, and then you start rubbing on stuff. Well, yep. you're just going to rub. Yeah, cross your fingers, maybe add some camber. But, yeah, I mean, you're, you're just stuck with that ride height. Yep. And another downfall with uh, lowering springs and stock suspension in general is if you are looking for that performance and uh, you know better road feel, uh, the stock suspension uses a lot of rubber. And with a lot of rubber, you get a lot of deflection. And yeah. you know if you're really getting into any sort of racing, 
you really should go to a coilover setup. In general, lowering springs, if you just want to get a little bit lower and you don't want to spend a lot of money, that's your go-to. Uh, so I guess I would start off with cons of a coilover because there seem to be so few. Uh, would one be your suspension travel? Yeah, uh, limited you know, suspension travel. You're going from a shock that has probably 10 inches of total travel uh, to one that has, you know, in general, in the front will have four or five. Um, but that's all dependent on your model, too. The Kappa cars, for example, even from the factory have very little travel. So uh, it's going to be car dependent, but in general. Cost is obviously a con for coilovers. Um, you know, any quality coilover is going to start around 1000 and go on up. For sure. Uh, and you can get into three, dollars $4,000 if you're really that into it. I mean, you yep. had Olin's on your S2000, and yep. they're the top of the top, but you're going to pay for it. One of the biggest benefits of a coilover is uh, you get the ability to corner balance your car. Mm -hmm. That's a great benefit. Um, and, you know, uh, I said it a little bit earlier, is, okay, you put it together and the back is a little low. You can just raise it up a little bit yeah it takes seconds you know yeah. if you've got the car already up on a jack and you lower it and you're like ah it doesn't look quite right jack it back up yeah you know spin that coil over and you're good to go another nice thing is as as you said earlier you get to replace the entire strut assembly yeah your stuff's all rusty and you get this new coil over set up like you just get to take that apart and just and throw, throw it in the trash, the trash yeah. recycle it whatever um, everything is clean and fresh and nice. Yeah, you've got new studs at the top. You've got a new mount. So uh, another thing that a lot of people overlook when doing s struts and shocks and uh, is you will generally need new top mounts, especially Ecotech yeah. cars. They eat those like crazy. So not only can you adjust height, you can also adjust the driving dynamics of your car. Uh, there's a common rhetoric with coilovers that your ride's going to suffer. And inherently, because you have a little bit less uh, travel, it can. However, uh, especially with our coilovers, you have 32 clicks of damping range. Mm -hmm. And now what that damping does, as I've explained in the coilover breakdown video, it slows or speeds up the movement of the shock in relation to you hitting a bump. So if you go all the way down to zero clicks at its softest setting, I dare say that our coilovers ride better than stock FE5 suspension. But you can go all the way up to 32, and if you don't want your car to move it at all, you can have that. Uh, so going along with that is you can change based on where you're driving. So if you're around town and want it nice and soft, and you can click it down all the way to zero, one, two, uh, and then you hit the road course and you want to click it way up, if it's somewhere that has more uneven terrain, then you might need to bring it back down. But that's all in the design of coilover is you have that freedom to adjust. I've had pretty much every situation to where you put coilovers on the car and the car is stiffer, but it's like a better kind of stiff. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you feel everything, but instead of like having an impact and then maybe some kind of secondary tremor, yeah. um, a coilover will just, it's just like, doom, and you just hit it and it's, and it's back to smooth. Yep. It's going to be a preference on the way you drive, what you're driving for, and, you know, there, there are different levels of enthusiasts. You know, you have people who just want to throw a couple mods on and look a little bit cooler, or you have people who want to do a full build on their car. Yep. Uh, so you can land anywhere in between. Oh, well, let's not forget uh, with the coilovers, let's say your specific situation needs a different spring rate front to rear. Mm -hmm. Coilovers are designed around a very general style spring yeah so if you want to add a, a couple hundred you know pounds of spring pressure to the back or the front you just contact whoever you buy the coilovers from and you say hey i would like to increase my rear or increase my front spring ratio and then they can sell you those yeah yeah our coilovers are designed around a standard spring size so you can use swift springs you can use if you have a spring from a different manufacturer you can toss those right on now there is a caveat with that. You don't want to go too high or too low above what your standard rate was. You'll need to get into different valving, but for most people, you don't have to worry about that. Um, but I will say, along with being able to change springs, you can also get them rebuilt. Yep. Uh, so four or five years down the road, if you're starting to notice that they just don't perform quite as well, uh, 
almost all coilover manufacturers, you can send them back in and they'll revalve them, put new fluid in, and you'll be freshened back up for less than the cost of a new set. Let's say you have a car that has a very aggressive wheel and tire set up on it. You can adjust the bump on the car to where at the deepest compression of the coilover, it hits the bump stop and you can set your front and rear or each corner yep. completely separate. You just lower the car until your tire rubs, your wheel rubs or whatever, and you set it there. So you can make it to where no matter what, the car will not rub, rub. a tire. Yeah, yeah, there's there's so much complexity in coilovers that a lot of people miss and uh, you, know, you can really dial them in. You don't have to be super low and rubbing all the time. Uh, you, can, you can adjust them, you can do different spring lengths uh, if you need more or less travel. We've seen those guys with the Sonics that are doing the, the off-road setup to where yeah. they're raising them up. I mean, that's you can do that. Yep. So overall, with lowering springs, you have pros are obviously cost. Uh, the ease of installation can be, depending on your skill level, um, a little bit easier. And then cons, you have, they're a bit of a compromise. Uh, you have no adjustability. Then moving on to coilovers, you have cons are potentially a higher introductory cost, uh, you know, a potentially firmer ride, but you do have the adjustability there. And then pros, you've got countless. So again, I'm Turbo Tim at ZZP. Tyler V, uh, if you have any questions, hit us up, customer service at ZZPerformance.com, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.